Guys, welcome back to Precision Rifle Network. The Aero Precision Solace. This is barreled action and the Aero Solace chassis bought separately, put together. The barrel is actually spun up by Desert Precision Gunworks in 6GT. So I'll be running the factory match. This is a 109 ELDM from Hornady. And uh, we're just gonna get it zeroed here at 100 yards first, and then we'll stretch it out. I'll let you guys know what I think about it. So let's get going. First thing I wanna tell you guys is about the magazines. I am currently using an AI brand magazine here. It seems to function pretty well with this magazine. I had feeding issues with an MDT mag, and I had a feeding issues with the Accurate mag. Using the Axel X cores for Hearing Pro. Really good, they're running some awesome deals right now if you guys aren't familiar with them. All right, first shot's at 100. Here we go, see if I'm on paper. I gotta get my spotter set up real quick and see if I can see where that hole went. 19 shots later. All right guys, finally stretching the 6GT out, so. After running across the uh, the Garmin chronograph for 19 shots, we got an average of 29.05 feet per second and a standard deviation of 11. So for factory ammo, I'm gonna call that pretty good. It was a sub MOA group down there. I got one that was probably better than a half an inch and one that was just better than an inch. So I'm calling that me. I'll do some more testing on the groups and obviously I'll hand load for it too. But right now I just wanna get it stretched out. So we're gonna start at three, we'll go three, four, five, six, Far as we can get reliable hits today, it's fairly windy today. Looking at a 10 mile per hour kind of switching front wind. Usually that means I hold straight up on the plate and see which side it goes to. Hopefully the plates are big enough to soak up that difference. So here we go. No problem at the three. Let's see what it's calling for at four. Calling for 1.6. So 400. Center impact at four. All right, next we're going to five. Calling for 2.4. Good impact. I'm gonna switch to that bowling pin, see if I can get a better idea where it's hitting. All right, elevation was perfect, just slightly right, but within a tenth, so I'm not adjusting that. Let's go to six. 3.2 to 600, 3.2 to 600. Six hundred, might've been a little low. I'm gonna come to my right. There's a big plate down there on the ground. All right, elevation was good. We just had more left to right wind that time than I thought. Two tenths, two to three tenths of wind. Calling for 4.1 out to 700. <sighs> Miss. <laughs> and I missed the other side. That's a smaller plate at 700. My wind is definitely fishtailing out there, so it's kind of hard to tell where I'm supposed to be going, but 5.2 to 800. Still just gonna hold straight up on the wind, guys. I don't know. That's an impact on the big plate. Elevation looks good. Windage was actually pretty good that time too. Actually, I need, I need to come off a 10th. So at that distance, we're adjusting BC, slightly better. Send another one. Yeah, good impact, centered up. 6.2 to 900, 6.2 to 900. No call. Yep, 
No call. Wind is showing right to left here, left to right down there. Straight up call should get it on that wide of a plate, but see all that mirage is saying left to right down there. My grass is in between here and there, are right to left. I'm gonna hold left edge. That time I saw it, I was just off the right, I believe. Get a little more left or right. No, I was too far left. <laughs> We're right there. The elevation's good, guys. The wind is always the equalizer, though, isn't it? All right, truing up at 700. And what we'll do at 700 yards is we'll adjust our BC if we're high or low. This should be just about right on. And we'll see if we're back on our wind call here, which is now shifted back right to left here. And a straight up boil out there. So <laughs> go figure. Good impact, maybe a little low. Let's give it another 10th. There it is. There it is on the small plate. Now we're definitely trued up exactly. 1.6 to four, small plate. Dead nuts in the center. Stacking it. That's three shots right on top of each other at 400, guys. I'd say our data is now trued up. We are definitely on. Again, 2905 feet per second average out of the factory Hornady 6GT. 2905 with a standard deviation of 11. So not bad. It's definitely good enough, especially, you know, it's shooting um, 0.4 of an inch to about 0.7 of an inch at 100 yards. I haven't even touched the EC tuner brake up on the front yet. I'll be able to shrink that down to where it's consistently shooting better than a half inch. She's gonna be a hammer. So let me get back to the man cave and I will give you my final thoughts about the Aero Solace rifle as a whole, chassis, action, everything, having put about 60 to 80 shots through it here today. Guys, welcome back to the man cave, and we are gonna talk about the Aero Solace. And first and foremost, I need to shout out the channel sponsor, Arkin Optics. Yes, they are sponsoring my channel, but if you look back through my social medias and things I've said in my videos for years now, you will see that I have promoted and, um, and talked highly of Arkin Optics all along. If you're looking for an optic that does the job that you need it to do, tracking is guaranteed, they're durable, they're robust, they look good, turrets feel good, the glass is good enough to do everything that you need it to do for PRS style shooting inside of a thousand yards. It's not a $2,500 optic. It's not a $3,500 piece of glass. It's a $1,000 piece of glass that only costs you three or 400 bucks. So check out Arkin for me and let's get into the rest of the review. So I'm gonna just start at the tail end of this rifle and move my way across, tell you what I thought about it and those sorts of things. So. Um, obviously at the tail we've got the chassis, so we're just going to talk about the chassis first. This chassis, if I were to rate it on a scale of like, you know, 10 being amazing, it's the perfect chassis, and 0 being crap, uh, I would probably give this chassis an 8.5 or a 9 out of 10. And there's a number of reasons that I think that. Number one, all of the adjustability that you would expect is there. Length of pull is super simple, just a little knob, unscrew it, in and out, right? And same with the cheek piece, little knob, unscrew it, up and down, and super simple. All those things are nice, fit and finish. You know, it does have a bag rider down here on the bottom, which I like, and uh, just everything about the chassis looks really good. It's 
It's very pleasing to the eye and the hand. They actually radius rounded everything. Every surface is smooth and nicely finished. No sharp edges whatsoever to speak of. I really like that. You've got the ability to change the grip, right? Like this is a standard AR type grip. It came with the vertical grip here. I kind of like the, the vertical grip from MK Machining a little bit better. So I will probably change that out to the ultralight vertical grip from MK. Um, super nice, nothing to complain about there. Um, you do have your, your mag release here. It is ambidextrous, so either side of the trigger guard, just push forward, mag drops out. I will take a minute just to say, and I think I said it at, out at the range, but I tried three different types of magazines. And uh, so I tried an MDT mag and I tried an accurate mag and neither one of those seemed to feed the 6GT reliably. We need to be able to adjust those magazines and neither one of those mags worked. What did work was an Accuracy International brand magazine. That one I used, it fed reliably, no issues. Uh, a little bit of hanging up on the feed lips, but I suppose if I just tuned those a little bit, smoothed them down, they would probably be better. I do like the adjustable uh, thumb shelf over here. It's placed in the perfect angle and position, at least for my grip. Really nice, no complaints there. And as we move forward, you do have a little bit of a barricade stop uh, here on the front of the magwell. Uh, really a non-issue. I tend to stop before I get there anyway, because if you push into your magazine, you can cause issues. The rifle balanced nicely without having to add any weights, though you could add weights because you've got all the M-Lock slots along here, the MDT weights or weights from something like uh, Ultradyne or somebody like that would mount right onto the M-Lock slots. Long rail here uh, and full length Arca milled into the bottom, which is nice. And you do have all the QD cups. You've got three, four per side for a total of eight QD cups as you go along, so that's pretty great. Um, as we come out of the chassis, we've got the action, of course, and it is the Aero Solace action. And I, I went ahead and I bought the chassis uh, separately. Um, the barrel action was sent to me for review by Kenny uh, of Desert Precision Gunworks. He spun up the barrel, and I'm not sure what he used as far as brand of the barrel, but the barrel's a hammer, we'll get into that. So Desert Precision Gunworks did the barrel and uh, attached it to the action for me and sent it for review, so shout out to them. I originally had it just in a Graybow stock and I thought, nah, this is more of a PRS kind of a rig. So I'm gonna get the Aerosolis chassis to go along with it. And the chassis I found at Midway here locally uh, for a little bit of a discount and I went ahead and bought it. And I'm glad that I did. I will not be selling this chassis even if the barreled action goes away. Uh, because I really like the chassis. It's very nice in my opinion. So um, on to the action. Again to that scale of 1 to 10, 10 being amazing. The action would probably get like a 7 out of 10, maybe a 6.5 out of 10. Two main things. It's not a $1,400 action in smoothness. Okay, so so when you unlock that bolt and slide it, it it's it's clunky, it hangs up. Uh, that could be just a function of the magazine, but even without a mag in it, it just kind of feels, gritty is the wrong word, it's not gritty. There's really nothing wrong with it, it just it feels like a factory action. It doesn't feel like a custom action, you know what I mean? We get, we get kind of spoiled with these high-end custom actions and how they feel nice and smooth and just really positive and smooth. Um, with no slop or anything in them. This feels like a factory action, you know, if you were to buy, and not a factory Tika, if you know what I mean. Um, this is more like a Remington 700 factory action, and it feels like that, right? So <clears throat> I guess that's a downside when you're paying more than factory pricing. This action is not that expensive. It's around 800 bucks if, I, if my memory serves. And it seems to be nice, and what the really great feature of it is is that you can build off of it, right? You can not pay 1400 bucks if you want to, and you can build a, a, a solid shooting PRS-type target rifle, hunting rifle, off of the action, and you've only spent 800 bucks. There's a number of other actions out there that are in that price range, but for me, man, it, it just, bottom line, it comes down to that fit and finish and just enjoyment of the shooting process. 
for me, I think my action, kind of the foundation of any rifle, it will always have to be a custom action. I, I don't know what else to tell you on that. I don't like the feel of a factory action. I like the feel of a custom action. So it scores a little bit less because of the feel of it. And also the one kind of downside to me with the Solace action in the Solace chassis is that I cannot remove the bolt without first raising the cheek piece all the way up. That's a frustration because once I get that cheek piece set, I don't like to move it. It's not that big a deal, but it is a minimal downside that I can add in, right? Like I have to move this thing all the way out. Like even right now, as high as it is, it won't come out. And if I go all the way to the bottom, it won't come out. I have to take this, this rail all the way to the top and then angle it kind of underneath the cheek piece before I can get that bolt to come all the way out. And that's a downside to me. I, I don't feel like I should have to do that. Uh, so so that's that's the action itself. The barrel, again, Desert Precision Gunworks, Kenny over there spun up the barrel, attached it to the action, and the barrel is a hammer. Okay, I, I, uh, I used Factory Hornady 109 grain ELDMs, and it shot a little better than a half inch group uh, with that at 100 yards just during break-in. And then about 80 or so rounds in, 60 to 80 rounds into the barrel, I went ahead and put a three-shot group out at 400 yards. I'll put it up on the screen for you, but that measured 0.3 MOA. So it's like a 1.2 inch group or something out at 400 yards with that ammo. And I tracked it with the Garmin Chronograph for 19 rounds. I'm not sure why I didn't do 20, but I did 19 rounds. Um, and uh, that ammo got uh, a standard deviation of just under 12 feet per second for that many rounds. And um, with, a, with a feet per second average of 2909, I believe, something like that. So again, it's up on the screen for you guys. And I was, I was pleased with that. And this is probably going to speed up yet, too, this barrel will. Uh, maybe another 50 feet per second or so. I'm not sure exactly. It is finished out at 26 inches up on the front. We've got the Eric Cortina uh, tuner brake, which I didn't even have to touch. Um, the rifle just shoots without messing with that. Maybe I'll tweak it if I go along or if I start to see those groups, those initial groups open back up after break-in, but man, it was great. Uh, running the Atlas Cal bipod up front, of course, and I've got the Zeiss LRPS5 uh, 3-18 up on top awesome piece of glass and i've got the american rifle company split rings here on top so hopefully that gives you all the information you ever wanted to know about the aero solace um, i will I, it, just to be intellectually honest with you guys i have heard some negative reports uh, from people that i trust um, that some of the aero solace actions are having some quality control issues the majority of the ones out there that you get are solid they're good to go and then you just have a few, right? And unfortunately, a few that get into the hands of people um, who have a larger audience and people saying, oh, it's, there's quality control issues. Like I just said, kind of take that for with a grain of salt, guys. Like I've heard of a few people that have had some issues. I personally have had no issues. And the guy that sent me this action has had no issues. And a lot of people have had no issues with it. Don't get into the mindset of expecting an $800 action to perform or be as good as a $1,400 custom action, right? It's, it's, just, um, it's just not going to be the case, okay? So you got to look things in at, at things in their proper perspective. So um, that's it. That's all I've got to say on the Aero Solace. Uh, for me, the chassis is the clear winner. The barrel is the winner. The optic is the winner. The action, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it was their first attempt, and it's fine. Um, maybe some improvements will come along the way. Uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, but thanks for watching. Nonetheless, guys, make sure and hit that subscribe button. Help me out uh, as I get up there to 100,000 subscribers. Also, check out the links in the description to my website where you can find all the affiliate deals. Some amazing affiliate deals going on right now. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Stay tuned for more from Precision Rifle Network.